Welcome to the Bionicle Inspiration series where the Evoki on your Toa hero. We're going to be shining a light on the ways that you can improve your building and grow your creativity so that you too can be inspired and build some awesome Bionicle mocks. Today we're talking about leg designs and I'm not specifically focusing on one aspect of leg designs. I just want to kind of cover a a wide variety of different leg designs, whether that's upper legs, lower legs, and kind of even to some degree feet as well. Just the whole leg. We're going to be talking about that today on this episode. So let's begin. The first mock we've got is by a one Shadow Gear 6335, and this mock is called Betty Beatdown. So I love the idea of doing like floating legs. You know, it's a little bit different, it's a little bit out there. Of course, uh, Shadow Gear always kind of really likes to play around with the concepts in his mocks. Uh, you can kind of quite often see him building different characters that utilize different stands, whether it's uh, a brick-built stand made with Lego pieces or Bionicle pieces or some trans-clear Technic beams and things. Or if you use like an action figure stand, like a Figma stand, or just one of those invisible stands that you can get with action figures. Or sometimes they're not even invisible, you know? Maybe you collect some action figures, you got some lying around, and you know, they came with some cool stands. You could uh, hold up your mock with those. And then you could do some really interesting things with legs where they're not actually attached to the floor. Instead, they're floating in some manner, and they're sort of more of like a floating drone or a floating robot or you know, something that kind of utilizes magnetism or jet engines or something, and they don't, in fact, have feet and sit on the ground or stand on the ground in that manner. Uh, they actually float, so that's really interesting. But we take a look at some of these other kind of behind-the-scenes pictures and just a few other shots as well of Betty Beatdown, and the legs do this really cool thing. So, of course, sometimes they're like this, and they're all sort of... Uh, clumped together and they're floating here but then you get these cool shots where the legs sort of almost fold out on each other and kind of become this almost spider legs is probably the wrong word but kind of like spider legs you know it kind of becomes this really interesting thing where suddenly they can walk and so you get these two interesting modes with the legs you know it's a really different way of doing legs instead of just your typical you know humanoid one leg two leg instead no you've got six legs like this and they fold up and they do all this craziness that's a uh, really unique and really different, and I definitely see some roots in Bionicle there. You know, you take a look at uh, some of the old, well, we talked about the Evoki before, you know, the old Mask of Light movie, and you had characters like Krekker and Nodiki, and even some of the Rakshi, if I remember it correctly. It's been a while since I watched that movie. But, uh, you know, they'd have this cool thing where suddenly their legs folded up and they just jotted off, and suddenly they could uh, they could fly. You know, what a cool ability, you know? And so to some degree you could argue that... Uh, that's canon, and a thing that Bionicles can do is kind of fold up their legs and fly off like that. So uh, I like that this mock's doing that. It kind of actually has some surprisingly nice roots in Bionicle there, which is cool. And also just a really unique concept, you know? Why not do that? Instead of just, you know, like I said, typical humanoid leg design, why not branch out and do something totally different like this where it almost transforms to some degree? It's unique and it's different. And heck, we even kind of have this shot here where the legs are still kind of folded out, but also these hands are kind of coming out on the ground and kind of looks like it's almost sort of implanting itself in the ground to some degree, and these hands almost become legs. You, know, you see characters like the Dugs, you know, Sebulba in episode one of Star Wars, and, you know, their feet are more their hands, and their hands are more their feet, you know, a very interesting uh, character design there, and a character design I really, really like, actually. So uh, something else you could do, too, is uh, really mix things up. Why not have the hands be the legs, or the legs be the hands, or the head be the hands? Why not, you know, have some, uh, some interesting ways of looking at it there. Definitely multiple different ways you can approach a leg design, and this mock does it really well. So, of course, uh, Shadow Gear 65 is a good friend of mine, and uh, when he was sending me some whip pictures of this, uh, he shared with me a little fun tip, which I want to now share with you. So, of course, this mock utilizes some flex tubing, and depending on the pictures that I throw in here, you can see that uh, sometimes the tubes kind of uh, wrap around each other, and uh, all these different hands uh, sort of, uh, well, all those different beams kind of intertwine into one another, or they can kind of separate to some degree, which is really, really beautiful. But of course, flex tubing is a bit of a pain to work with sometimes because you want to bend it one way, and it just says, I don't think I'm going to do that. Uh, but. What Shadow Gear did here, of course, if you look at your typical flex tube, there is that very, very thin line through the middle, and you know, if you were to blow air through it, it would go to the other side, of course. Well, if you get a very thin wire, you know, a little thin metal wire, and you just feed it through that hole, you obviously, you, of course, have to get the right uh, length of wire there. You don't want to break it or uh, puncture anything there. Um, but if you just feed a thin wire through it, 
you can bend the flex tube and it will you know, stay in place if it's a sturdy enough wire, of course. And that's uh, that's what Shadow Gear's done here, so that this way the flex tube uh, isn't bending in different directions and going ways you don't want it to. You can bend the flex tube to your will, much like Sidious does to his apprentices. You can bend it to your will and use it as you please. Not technically purist, you know, unless you break into LEGO HQ, steal some wire that Jonathan, the LEGO designer, had on his LEGO desk, and you go, ah, it came out of the LEGO factory. That that means it's purist. And eh, maybe. Maybe. I don't advise you do that, you know. This, this is not a PSA saying, please steal from LEGO. Don't do that. But, you know, it's an option. Well, it's not an option. An option to use wire, even though it's not technically purist. Stumbling over my words here. Creating possible health and safety risks. But we're all good. And you know what else is good? This fantastic mock by Brendan. This next mock is by D. Braylon. And it's called Kashmir. Or Kashmir. Kashmir is probably not the name he was looking for. Kashmir. Kashmir. So the leg design on this, we got some of those purple Onawa masks here being used as knee pads. Always cool to see masks being used as things that they're not intended to be used for. And of course, again, those masks are being used as shoulder pads there. Some nice kind of visual unity, kind of repeating pieces there to kind of get very consistent textures going on. It's really cool, really well done. But yeah, going back to the legs, of course, knee pads as masks. Great idea. You could do that with pretty much any mask you got lying around, I'm sure, whether it's this mask or another one, and uh, you get a really effective looking knee design. It kind of looks almost like, uh, kind of like knee pads or something, rather than just the shape of the knee. It looks like he's actually kind of got armor on top or just sort of protection or something. Uh, I like that design, and th there kind of is this uh, slight aesthetic that this guy kind of looks like he's uh, got some armor on. You know, the way that the color blocking is done on these legs, some good color blocking on these legs too. The white is very concentrated on the feet. It kind of looks like he's got these like boots, almost maybe even snow boots or something perhaps. And of course, he's used this range trooper head, the range trooper from Star Wars, uh, Solo, a Star Wars story. I always mix those two up. Uh, really, really cool stormtrooper helmet. And I've spoken about this with Mitch Henry before in a podcast. It's always awesome seeing that head being used on mocks because it's, it's in this beautiful kind of uh, period at the moment where the range trooper is still a really beautiful Star Wars design. But it's not as iconic as Darth Vader's head or Stormtrooper head. It's still in that sort of flux period where, you know, some people may not have seen Solo and go, oh, I didn't even realize that was a Star Wars helmet, you know. And so it's one of those few CCBS Star Wars heads you can use that you won't necessarily get any confusion about it being directly something from Star Wars. You can at least use it and it has uh, uh, you know, a bit of room to play with there, which is beautiful. Uh, but of course, the range trooper, you know, uh, on the, the planet Vandor there, that he's from in Solo, A Star Wars Story. He is on a more ice-focused planet. And so, I don't know, I'm kind of getting little notions of, you know, snow boots, kind of this uh, fur waistcoat there, and this range trooper head kind of does look like he's ready for snow. So uh, I like that elements of the leg design are possibly reflecting that, of course, I'm sure. Mr. Mister The, or The, whatever you want to say there, uh, I'm sure he's looking at his eye. That wasn't the intent. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's, there's little repeated elements here, even a bit of kind of cloth around the, the, the like a, kind of like a little scarf or something at the top of the uh, the neck and uh, chest there. So yeah, there's little elements that could be hinting at that. So uh, some nice, uh, a nice little winter aesthetic going on here, um, just through some color blocking and a few other elements, you know. And it's always nice, too, with your, your leg designs to add like a little bit of a, a waistcoat or something like that, introduce a little bit of cloth here and there just to, Add a little bit more depth, kind of buff things out a little bit. It's always, always really nice to do. And this is a great example of that. Great colour scheme too. Black, white and purple. Very nice. This next mark is by Anthony Wilson, the man I had the pleasure of hanging out with at Brickvention this year. Great to catch up with you, bud. And this is his mock Zowl Renegade unit. So these legs here are very system heavy. Uh, not too much Bionicle used on this mock, but still a really awesome looking humanoid character. And you know, sometimes system is just gonna get the job done that you want to get done. And that might be the solution to use. So, you know, maybe you're building a mock currently and you're like, thank God Ben did an episode on leg designs. I've been struggling with legs. You've tried 86 different solutions. You've tried the 87th now and it still didn't work. Or maybe the 88th solution that you want to try now is something system focused. Maybe you weren't really focusing too much on system. Well, you can get some very different results here. You know, especially what we see here, very rounded designs here, very organic and kind of uh, the distinction between the lower leg and the upper leg here kind of giving this uh, interesting kind of, uh, n kind of pronounced the knee joint here almost. Uh, it's really quite nice, and it's something you could kind of do with Bionicle to some degree, but just the the levels of detail on this and the sort of slight stripe here 
of uh, this beautiful new coral color. Uh, you, you just couldn't really get that with Bionicles. So uh, it's, it's, it's awesome the results you can achieve when you do really know what you're doing when you're using system. And uh, Anthony's a man who knows what he's doing when he's using his system. Uh, he's, he's, a good, he's, he's, a, he's a good egg, that Anthony. Another thing I like about this leg design too is that it doesn't have any feet. You know, it kind of just, it almost sort of seems like it's a, a mock that's sort of hovering or at least, uh, you know, maybe it has like magnets in its feet or something and it kind of uh, just, it just finds a way of walking without feet. It's a more unique design in that manner. It just kind of rounds off at the end there. You know, maybe you're building your mock now and when you're putting the feet on, it just doesn't look right. Or maybe you just create a little rounded uh, little design like this and you build a little stand for it, get some transclear pieces and that can hold it up. You know, that's something to think about. Do you really need the mock to support itself and actually stand up on its own weight? You could build a stand like this, put some transclear pieces up the bum like that. That's that's a sentence I refuse to repeat again. And uh, <laughs> uh, as a result, you don't need any feet. You can just sort of stand up through the help of a stand. And what a beautiful stand that is too. Uh, it's very nice. So something to think about when you're playing around with your leg designs. Great to see Anthony playing around with some uh, beautiful new colors. Like I said before, uh, that awesome, um, I keep calling it salmon, I keep calling it coral, I'm pretty sure it's coral, that new red color, it is coral, I'm like 99% sure it is, but by all means, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, and then playing with teal, those colors go beautifully together, um, great color scheme. Next mark here is by Lego David, and is called Lady Annabelle. So I've said this before, but I'll say it again, especially because this mock does it a little bit differently, which is always nice. Cloth pieces are fantastic, especially because, hey, if you're struggling with a leg design, but you know you want to put some cloth on the legs, just use that cloth to fully cover up the leg design. If it's not quite looking right, put some cloth in front of it, and no one has to see the monstrosity that you have created. Or, you actually make really nice leg designs, but you still put the cloth over the top of it, and you know, deep in your heart, there's a great leg design under that, but no one will see it but you have that satisfaction and you feel good about it. Either way. Now, of course, I, in these pictures here, he doesn't show uh, the leg design on the mock, you know, but you don't need to because it works. Of course, this dress design here, you might be like, Ugh, that's not Lego. Oh, but it is. It is a Scala dress. Scala was uh, an older, awesome Lego theme, which I almost wish they'd bring back, but it's probably not very uh, not much of a 2020 theme, really. I don't think uh, people would necessarily, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a, product designer maybe maybe people would want Scala now I hope they would because we got some really cool pieces out of it like this awesome dress design here and a whole bunch of other different clothing and cloth elements uh, from Scala lots of great pieces from Scala um, and as we see here it's being used on a brick built figure it looks fantastic and hey if you want to play around with some uh, clothing elements on a mock Scala's your theme to look into also got a click its flower on the hair here beautiful and we got a whole bunch of mixel joints here to create this more sort of slender frame here and again, mixel joints, something to consider as well. Can you use some mixel joints on a mock? Whether it's a smaller mock, you know, mixel joints kind of lend themselves to smaller mocks like this, because they're naturally smaller pieces. Or can you kind of build in some mixel joints into a larger system-focused design? And, you know, mixel joints are very sturdy uh, connections there, so you could easily integrate it as a, a knee joint or a leg joint of some kind. It could work well. Something to consider, at least. So yeah, a really cool mock that's using some really obscure and fun pieces. Uh, really awesome. This next mock here is by Leonid Arn and is called God of Fire. So, you know, limbs are cool, legs are cool. We as humans, for the most part, all have them. But if I could, I would easily replace my legs with a bunch of wheel treads. I probably wouldn't actually. I like walking. But what an awesome design and what an interesting way of uh, approaching a leg design, you know? Don't do legs. Don't do limbs. Put some wheels on the bottom of your creation. Because it's a great idea and it works really well here. It's really out there and distinct and different. Uh, and uh, nothing wrong with some really out there, distinct and different designs on mocks. Uh, this, is, uh, this, this mock really shines as a result of it. Of course, using some tread pieces, you get those uh, a lot in different Technic sets. And I always recommend buying a few Technic sets because you can easily, very easily use those pieces on any sort of Bionicle creation or construction creation that you're making there. Whether it's those cool Technic panel pieces that come on Technic sets or all the different lift arms and axles and pins and things. It'd be pretty easy to integrate. And then you get these treads that you can play around with too. And you never know what fun you might be able to have with them. So, uh... Something to consider for sure, and uh, you know, the, the whole vein of wheels, the different things you can play around with, wheels or treads and things like that, opens up a lot of possibilities for leg designs. It's something to think about. I so love this big old obscure, almost like dinosaur head here, with all these different teeth like that. Uh, the, the fact that it's like this weird lizard guy with uh, 
uh, tread wheels as feet. That, that makes it even better, in my opinion. I really, really dig that. So yeah, very menacing, strong, distinct, unique design here. It's really cool. The next one here is by Red and is called ART00 Automated Runner Turret. So this leg design's quite different. It almost kind of looks a little bit like stilts to some degree for the leg design, but also it's unique because, again, it doesn't. It, it kind of does have feet, but it kind of doesn't. These larger Binacle G2 blade pieces here are kind of used to form the bottom of the leg that kind of just flows into the feet. It's more distinct, it's more different, and it, it definitely provides this very fast-looking, agile design, uh, which... I'm sure is, uh, well, well, I'm not, I know for a fact that it is a clearly deliberate choice because you got other elements on this mock, like the blades coming out the back and just the general kind of sleek look of this mock. It uh, does give off this sort of very agile, fast uh, sense and aesthetic to it. It's beautiful. Uh, and a really unique way of approaching a leg design to just simply kind of put blades there for the legs. It's just kind of round it off and give it this more refined look. Uh, this very sleek design. It's beautiful. It's beautiful for the aesthetics, but beautiful for the concept and kind of, yeah, kind of creating a bit of a story for it. Uh, it's awesome. A very unique way of approaching it. And can you do that too? Can you just say, hey, you know what? Why not make the lower leg and the feet one distinct thing? It just flows directly into the other and it's not necessarily a different joint or anything. Uh, it is just one whole thing like that. Uh, an interesting way of looking at it, for sure, and a great way to use some of these uh, funky blade pieces, too. I also like that this mock doesn't have a head. I mean, to some degree, you could argue that it does, but, like, there's no distinct uh, neck on the mock and then a, an actual head or an eye or anything. It's kind of up to you where that is. And, you know, if you're building a drone, you can kind of always get away with that. I, I don't know if this is necessarily a drone, but if you're looking for a more robotic design like that, by all means, do that. Can you integrate the head and the eye design directly into the torso? Or can you not even put a head on it at all and just kind of allude to where the head is? Or maybe like the next mark we're going to see, you put the head in a completely different area. While we're talking about this next mark, let's just jump right into it too. So that was a really cool mock red. This mark is by Tony A and is called Overseer. So as I was saying, the head here is on the waist. So I kind of like that too, you know, do you need to have the legs be where the legs are? Can the legs come out of the arms or can the legs come out of the back or the, can the legs come out of the neck and it just be weird? And can, for that matter, does the head even need to be where it normally is? Do the arms need to be not where it normally is? Play around with it, man. Toss it around, try some new stuff, put things in areas they shouldn't be and see if it works. And if it doesn't, well, okay, that's cool. Put it somewhere else and see if that works, you know? And if it does work, sweet, happy accident. But onto the legs. That's what we were talking about today. These Radu R Rotuka, Rotuka spinner pieces being used as uh, these kind of larger, very thin, uh, kind of like pincer looking kind of leg designs here is awesome. What a distinct and different leg design to give it this more sort of bug-like uh, four-legged design. Uh, really unique and really different, you know? Can you kind of, can you kind of mash two things together, you know? Give them, give a humanoid mock spider legs or, you know, just give them like a centipede uh, body or something like a centaur, you know, give them a horse body underneath instead for legs. That's interesting and different. Or like this, just kind of giving it this more, I don't know, I see influences of it kind of being a bit more bug-like. Could even be a little bit more sort of uh, science fiction mechanical looking or something, or, you know, those could be like large like pistons or something like that. And, you know, it's interesting. And a great use of those Rotuka spinner pieces, because unless you're using them for Rotuka spinners, it's kind of hard to use, and they've been used very well here. And I like that he's used those Wenua, uh, one of our Metru pieces there, his kind of funky uh, sort of shovel weapons, uh, almost as kind of like knee pads. I mean, he doesn't, I don't know if this really guy really necessarily has knees, but just the beautiful transition uh, from that piece into the Rituka spinner and then into uh, the rest of the body there. It just looks nice. It's a great use of that part. So yeah, a very distinct and different mock here. It's cool. And that's it for a bunch of leg designs in this leg-focused episode of the Bionicle Inspiration series. If you enjoyed this episode and you want to comment below, I'm sure you've already realized the comments are disabled, unfortunately. Uh, that is not my doing. That is Koopa, Copa, Copa, Koopa's doing. Uh, it's just a YouTube-wide thing if you're making uh, content that could be watched by kids, so unfortunately you can't comment there. But if you want to leave your thoughts, there's links in the description below to my Discord server, Facebook page, Twitter, Instagram, all sorts of different places. Feel free to drop me a message there, share your thoughts on this episode, or even join the conversation over on Discord. We've got heaps of people over on Discord, and we've got some really fantastic conversations going on. 
people sharing their mocks, sharing some building tips and thoughts. And uh, yeah, we've got a little inspiration tab there where you can uh, drop some funky pictures or some cool mocks that you've seen and uh, yeah, just yeah, get, uh, get to talking to some like-minded people and uh, get those creative juices flowing even more. Of course, in the description as well is links to all the mocks you saw in today's episodes. Be sure to check out some of the other stuff these guys have made. They're really talented people and they deserve a little bit more love. And hey, I'm sure they'd love to hear your thoughts on their mocks as well. And if you want to see your own stuff on the show, you of course can do so. I had two submissions in this episode. I believe if you want to put some of your own submitted mocks in the episode, you can do so through the email you're currently seeing on your screen. That is the only way to submit mocks to the show, of course. All you need to do is send me a few pictures and put any other information you want to put in there. If you want to give me like 80 pictures, if you want to give me one picture, if you want to write the whole backstory of the mock or write nothing at all, that's okay. Send me whatever you deem necessary in an email and I will add it to the list and one day it'll appear on the show. Anyway, it's time for me to put on my Shilek, my mask of silence, and shut up and end the episode. Bye guys, I'll see you then. 